Do you make this mistake on AC maintenance? Let's find out. Welcome back, I'm Chris Moran with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week we're gonna talk about the one thing that AC technicians avoid at all costs, and that's cleaning the condenser coil. I don't know why, maybe it's the fast paced nature of our business, but they seem to avoid it at all costs, or, or maybe they just can't find a spigot outside. I find it hard to believe they don't have a hose long enough for it. Also, this may be one of the largest aspects of maintenance that should be completed every season that actually impacts the efficiency of the system. Well, supposing you got the refrigerant charge right anyway. For an air conditioner operating at a design load, for simplicity, let's say that's 85 degrees outside, the condenser can actually deliver close to nominal capacity. Remember, nominal capacity is in tons. It ranges from one and a half tons to five tons in half ton increments for most unitary manufacturers. And also there's 12,000 BTUs per hour for every ton. So for this example, I'm gonna use a three ton or 36,000 BTU condenser. As you can see at 85 degrees, what we're calling our design conditions, this system will actually deliver 35,400 BTUs per hour, which is actually very close to the nominal rating of 36K. When a condenser becomes fouled or dirty, it's really hard for it to reject heat from the refrigerant. This in turn drives up the head pressure because we're stacking liquid up in the condenser because we can't subcool very easily. And it's gonna start operating much more inefficiently and act like it's operating at a higher than normal ambient temperature outside. For our 410A system with a dirty condenser, it could easily be 60 pounds higher on your liquid line pressure. This on the chart equates to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So instead of it operating at 85 degrees outside, the condenser's operating like it's 105 degrees outside. And you can see on the chart again, we're gonna lose somewhere about 3,700 BTUs per hour. Remember, the condenser never gets cleaner until somebody actually cleans it. Therefore, the capacity losses continue to get greater throughout the season. Now, if we're gonna talk about efficiency of the system, that would be energy efficiency ratio, or EER. With a clean coil at 85 degrees, this system is operating at a 13.8 EER. But now look what happens when the condenser is operating like it's 105 degrees outside. The EER will actually drop to 10.1 because of the reduced capacity and the increase in electrical usage. When I first said you were gonna lose 3,700 BTUs per hour, you were probably like, so what? But look at what happens to the efficiency of the system. And remember, that's at design temp, what happens when it even gets hotter. For a heat pump, the impact on your electric bill could be more severe, particularly for cold climates like here in New England. If that outdoor coil is dirty, that heat pump will continue to lose capacity just like an air conditioner. In my example for a comparable heat pump to the AC we're working on, this system will deliver 35,400 BTUs per hour at 47 degrees. If the coil is dirty, it's not out of the realm of possibility that that system could be operating like it's 17 degrees colder outside. As you can see on the chart, that's gonna drop our heat output to 27,500, a loss of 7,900 BTUs per hour almost two and a half times what we were talking about with an air conditioner, right? More importantly, it could really hit the HSPF. Also, this doesn't include the increase in defrost cycles and turning on supplemental heat because now that system may not be able to keep up based on design loads. The one thing I can say that I haven't fully wrapped my head around is how mini split heat pumps tend to keep their coils so clean. I think it revolves around the micro channel coils and the fact that up here in New England, we have really long heating seasons. I think those defrost cycles will actually wash that coil off. But don't get me wrong, I never skipped that or made that mistake on maintenance. Thanks again for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. See you next week.